So we've talked about the more common types of documents that we can create in Google Drive, uh, word processor, spreadsheet, and presentation. Here's another kind of document that we can create that is very specialized. Once you see this, you might find a tremendous use for it. If you go back to your drive, so if you're not there, you can go back to drive.google.com, and you can then click the New button. It's hidden inside of More. We have Google Forms. Google Forms. Basically, these are contact forms. These are ways for you to collect information, as we'll see here. So they, they, they need a, bit of, a fair bit of setup. So that's why I'm talking about it last. Go ahead and click Google Forms. Uh, mine says try the new Google Forms. I'm going to skip that for the moment. I haven't seen the new Google Forms, so I don't want to show that yet. If yours says try the new ones, I guess don't do it yet. So we'll look at that later. Um, but then I've got at the top untitled form, a bunch of settings. Let's say that we're going to rename the document untitled form just to feedback form. This is going to be a form where we collect feedback, opinions of people. Here's some settings right at the top. Show progress bar at the bottom of the forms page. One of the theories of good user experience regarding forms is to show a progress bar. If I'm going to fill out a form and I don't know how long it is, at a certain point I'm going to feel this is too much and I'm going to give up. If I've got people, if I want people to answer 10 questions, but they don't know that it's only 10, maybe they think it's 100, maybe 20, they might not complete all 10. They might get tired of it or bored with it on the third question. How many more questions are there? So I recommend using the progress bar to show you're on question 1 of 7, 1 of 3, instead of 1 of infinity. They don't know how long it's going to go, so I recommend that one. Only one response per person. But this one requires a login. This one re requires a person to have a, a, a Gmail account to log in so that Gmail can keep track. This person already filled out that form. If you need that, you can activate it, but I'm going to leave it off because I want to collect as many responses as possible. And that does mean, yes, unfortunately, a person could answer the form three times. And if you've got something like your you're voting on something, yes, a person could go in and abuse it and vote 10 times on one thing, but that requires a login if you activate that. I won't activate it at the moment. Notice it says respondents must have a Google account. Shuffle question order. If enabled, the question order will with each page, the, the question order with each page will shuffle randomly. So this is much better for like tests and other sorts of feedback where if you change the order of your questions, the theory goes that your answers will be more truthful because people tend to get bored filling these things out. You've got 10 questions and they know there's 10, but maybe by question 6, because your questions are kind of complex, they give up. Well, if that's a common occurrence that people give up by the sixth question, you're not going to get very many answers for your seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth questions. So if you activate shuffle the order, the tenth question might be the first question one time, and then the tenth question might be the third question another time. And that's good because then you could get a range of real answers instead of the same five answers when people give up by the sixth question. This is going to depend on you. If you've got a long form that people will fill out, that might be useful to do. If you've got a form that's sort of like a test, that's also useful to do to prevent cheating. If someone says, okay, just answer question 1, 2, 3, A, B, C. Well, if you shuffle them, now those answers won't line up anymore. I'm not going to turn on shuffle, but you should see why it might be valuable to you. And then you've got page 1 of one. We can have multiple screens of questions. And on a particular screen, we can have multiple 
questions, or you can have one question at a time. Um, you have to decide how you want to present these questions to your users, but again, this is going to be a feedback, like, how well did you like this class? So I'm going to put together this form about how did you like this class. Uh, you've got feedback form, which, has, which is editable. It's not obvious, but if you hover your mouse over feedback form or description, you can edit these. This is going to be called feedback form here. But we will say class time questions. This section is going to ask about questions regarding the class time of the course. And I'm going to say under description, let us know about your preference for class times. First question, question title. It's untitled. I'm going to say, um, what is the best time for you to enroll? You can further add help text. If that's not obvious enough, I can add more. I'll leave that alone, but it's got then question type, multiple choice. Option one, I'm going to add three options. I'm going to add um, uh, option one will be 9.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Second option here, click to add a new option. I'm going to say 12.30 to 4 p.m. And third question will be 6 to 9.30 p.m. So this is multiple choice. People can select any of these particular options. If I wanted to, I can also add the add other. Then the person themselves can tell you, I want this time. Obviously, the more choices you give people, this there's a theory about this, I forget the name of it, but there's a theory that the more options you give people, the more you confuse people. If you've got three options to choose from, they have to choose one of these three. It might not be the perfect answer, but it, it guides you toward a better answer. If you then open it up to other, people will write anything there, including perhaps even words like tomorrow. So that doesn't make sense at all. You can write cat, and it will let them, basically. We've got go to page based on answer. That's also a little bit more complex. I won't uh, I won't work I won't I won't bother with that just yet. If a person chose a particular time, I can then have them jump to a different page. Remember, we've got page one. We can have as many pages as we want. Page one could be asking these questions. And if the person first selected 9 a.m., then that tells me that person might be most interested on in morning classes, so I'll guide them to this question, page three. So I'm not going to do that one yet. That's good there. We've got advanced. We can shuffle. If we don't want to shuffle all 10 of my questions, I can simply shuffle the order of these particular ones again to get a more true answer so that people are not always just clicking the first one, first one, first one, just to move on. Um, I'm not going to do this one. I want it in the order of the days of the, the, the times of the day, but you could do that. I'll say I'm done with that question. So there's that question now. It's been worked on. Whoops, I made a mistake. If you hover over it, you get the pencil. Edit. You get the pencil to come back to further edit it. You get a delete if you want to remove the question completely. And you get this duplicate, which is that I like these particular options and such. I want to create a new question based on it. Those three buttons appear when you hover over. I have add item, but before you click add item, you've got to triangle instead that will give you more options. Add item will give you a new question based on the current question, which is multiple choice. I could say my next question would be answer some text or write a paragraph, whatever. What I'm doing here is if I add a new item right now, I've been, I'm going to have two questions on one page, which may or may not be what I want. I might want to ask two questions before moving to the next page. I might want to add a ask all 10 of my questions in one page. That works fine as well. But 
perhaps one way to do it is first add a page break. Add page two. So one page at a time will show one question at a time. That won't overwhelm people. And they're going to have a little bar at the bottom that says question one of five. So in my case, I will add a page break. What's the name of the new page? I call that one class time questions. Next will be page, next kinds of questions will be class subject questions. Description is optional, but I'll say let us know your thoughts on the subject of the class. So page two will have this title and then this description at the top. Then one or more questions. I'll click done. And now in here, page two of two, I'm going to click the triangle add item. And this time I'm going to ask um, let's try choose from a list. Question title. Uh, subject questions. How did you hear about this course? If I actually wanted a different kind of question, I can still easily change it here. I don't want a list type anymore. I want something else. But I'm going to keep it list type. This is going to be very similar to the um, the multiple choice, except that all questions will be in one drop-down box. If you click that, it drops down and shows everything. So option one, how did you hear about this course? I'm going to say Facebook. Did they, did, did, did they follow us on Facebook and find out about it there? Website. Did they find out about the co through, of this class through the college's website? Did they find out about it from the printed catalog? What else? What other ways might you have found out about this class? Friends or word of mouth. And in this case, perhaps, um, it might also be useful to have the other, but this kind of question doesn't accept it. It's choose one of these. Multiple choice would allow for a person to choose their own option. Advanced settings, again, just shuffles it. Again, I can set a next page based on what the answer is. Usually I create all my pages, and then if I need to, I go back to a question and set what page do you want to go to, because you can't create a page at the moment that you set the page. You need the page first, and then you can link your questions. And notice, uh, I believe it was on the previous question too, this one says required question. So uh, in, in theory, you can make questions out of this five question quiz that a person doesn't have to answer. They can just click next and not answer anything. If you do want every answer filled out, you should require them. I'm going to say yes, I would like people to answer this. So I'll turn that on and click done, and I want to confirm back on my previous question. Did that one have it? That one also had it required, but I didn't turn it on. So I'm going to turn that one back on. If you just back up, notice these are separate screens, page one, page two, but they're all listed all at once. How it actually looks like. You can see, um, let's pause for a moment, let's see, what does it actually look like to people? View live form. If you click view live form, this is a person, class time questions. Let us know about your preference for class times. What's your best time? And I'm 50% complete. Okay, I'm going to select 6 p.m. Continue. Then here, Class subject questions, 100%. How did you hear about this? Well, I won't answer anything, but I'll try to submit. This question is required. Okay, I heard about it by the website. Submit. And then we'll see what it looks like when it gets fully completed. But that opened up in a new tab. I'm just practicing. I'm testing my form. I'm going to close that tab. Actually, since we did test it, fully, since I went through the whole submit, actually it did collect it as a response. 
a moment ago response said zero. I haven't collected any responses. Uh, so if you collected a response, we can deal with that later. But we'll see the responses in a moment. I'm going to ask a few more questions. So class time questions, class subject questions. We're going to create a new page. Click triangle, page break. So the times, the subject, and then let's say. Um, yes. When you say add item, what did, what did you shoot? I an add item. I selected a page. Let's say here we will ans we will ask questions about. Would you recommend? the instructor. Let us know if the instructor fulfilled your expectations. So now I've got page three out of three. And within the third page, I will click to add an item. Let's see. I'm going to add the item, perhaps this time to see how this one works, of a scale. So 1 to 5, 1 to 10, 1 to 100. Question title. Did the instructor teach you useful and relevant things. This is going to be a scale from 1 to 5. Then we label what the, what the 1 means and what the 5 means. Looks like we can go from 1 to 10, 1 to 5. So 1, did the instructor teach you useful things? No. Yes. And anything in between. So if a person chooses 3, it's kind of in the middle. If they choose 4, it's close to yes, but not all the way. And I'm going to require this question also. Add item. I'm sorry, not add item. Uh, just click done. So now I've got a third question with a scale here from no to yes, one to five. At the bottom right corner of every page, after page one, go to the next page. So it will then automatically go to the next page. These pages also can be reordered. If you put your mouse over a question, it can be dragged elsewhere. I'm not going to drag it, but let's say for whatever reason I've dragged class subject down to the third item instead of the second. I can do that. I can then work with after page one, go where? I finish page one, jump to page three. It doesn't have to be in the exact order that you've created this. And especially if you've created elements where you can um, where you can be taken to different branches. If someone selects 9 a.m., maybe don't ask that question, just simply go to page three. That would be able to be editable. But here then. What if as soon as a person finishes question one, it goes right away to the submit form? You can do that. You've got question one, two, three, and then after they're all done with it, the confirmation page. They will get a feedback message. Your response has been recorded. I can make it say something like, thank you. We value your feedback. The default is submit another response, answer it again. Hmm. That, might, uh, that might be 
skewing the results. So the default is yes, answer it again, but I'm going to turn it off. I only want one answer from that one person. The answers that people write, would you like these to then automatically be published so that everyone can see the answers? Usually not, but just to see what it looks like, I'll turn it on. This one says, if enabled, all respondents and anyone with the link will be able to see summary charts of this form's results. So then everyone else in the class can see what everyone wrote if I activate that. You might not want that, but just to see what it looks like, I'll turn it on. Respo allow respondents to edit responses after submitting. And that one's off by default, and probably you want to keep it off. So if a person wrote that they gave, that they said, no, I didn't learn what I wanted, and for whatever reason, then they get convinced by a friend, like, no, don't put that, put number two, and they want to go back to edit that they can't. So that keeps it a little bit more honest. If you would like people to go back and edit their answers again, you could by turning that on. I can send the form. It's done. It's always been saving automatically. Remember, Google Drive, it saves. I don't have to do anything special. If I click send, then now I can copy this link to send to people via email. I can send it to my social media. I can put people's email addresses there. I can click embed, and this will give me code that I can copy and paste to add directly to my blog or website, WordPress, whatever. And this form will get automatically added to my site. All the data will still be collected here on my Google Drive, but then the form will exist on there on another website. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this link and put it into the network folder so that you guys can go to it and look at it. Go to the network folder. I'm going to add a link there called contact form and in the network folder now there's that contact form and if you'd like to you can go look at that link and you can see it. it's fully functional. You can fill it in and answer it and it will show on my screen it will show the responses. I can edit the question. I can view the responses. It's going to show it to me like a spreadsheet because it's basically data. So notice at the top, view it, view the responses from people, edit it, or change the theme because right now it might look a little boring. If you click there, change theme, you'll see a variety of templates to choose from. Like that one. Accepting responses means that people can fill it out. If you check that off, then people cannot answer it anymore. So uh, you, you can leave that on if you have this on, but um, I won't put it in this video. I'm not turning turn that on. Okay. You want it on. And so maybe take a moment to look at change theme and see the different themes. You can select these different themes, and the theme also has customize. So there's many other aspects that then you can you can customize. So try that for a moment. 
select a different theme and then customize it a little bit. So what we did was we simply went here under edit questions we have change theme and you can then click on different designs we have the basic design and we have a variety of other designs like birthday cats and so we can choose these different designs and then you can also click to customize the design and then change the fonts and other such things So you can start off with a pretty boring form and then customize it. The main idea, of course, is the um, is the content of it. Here's page one of three. It says 33% complete. I can then answer these questions. At the top, when I'm notice, you you have to remember to switch back between change theme and edit theme. Once I go back to edit theme, I can view responses. I seem to have two responses. If I click there, I have different ways to work with my data. One thing under responses is if I select, it's kind of labeled opposite. It says basically you are currently accepting responses, so I can ex I can get your answers. If I click that, this form has been turned off. So now it says, I'm not accepting responses. If you try to follow my link, you won't be able to answer 
the questions. And when people go to the link, it'll say this message. So they should word that a little bit better. You want it to say currently accepting responses or responses are on, responses are off. I've collected two responses so then I can click there to view the summary. The summary will give me this chart that everyone will see here. And I've also got responses, the actual responses, which is the same as view responses. It'll give it to me in a spreadsheet manner so I can view it this way. And then uh, I can edit this in here. I can select a row, I can delete rows, I can delete people's answers. You really wouldn't want to, of course, you'd want to collect the, the responses. But basically, this feedback form is one of the kinds of forms that I can create through Google Forms. Um, it's one of the types of content we can create. We've got document, spreadsheet, presentation, form. We're not going to look at drawing, but it's a very basic drawing software. Uh, not as good as Photoshop, of course. But again, if you need to quickly draw things, you can draw and save them in your account. I've got form from template. Let's check that a moment. So it looks like people create forms and give them out to you and you can use them and they have ratings. Copy of copy of entry form. And it has three stars. So I'm going to close the tab of my form and that takes me back to my Google Drive and now I've got um, my feedback forms right there. And that basically as we wrap up, this has been our, our uh, course about the various aspects of Google as an advanced user. We've got Google Search built into our web browsers, built into our phones, we just use it, we search. But the advanced aspects are that there's a whole social network with hundreds of millions of people that like to use and share content. Then we've got the analytics and search console that helps us track the data of our website. And then we've got Google Drive, which is cloud storage, online document collaboration, forms, and the like. So as I wrap up the class, I hope you further continue to explore what's free from Google for advanced users. And I um, uh, hope to see you in a future class.